Republican Party down and out for good. According to a longtime Republican strategist, a GOP ice age is on the way. Listen to what Republican consultant Mike Murphy told Morning Joe today. What has happened is the, the demographics of America are changing in a way that the kind of votes that we don't get are growing and the votes that we do have are becoming less important. The two vo things I concentrate on are young voters, under 30, who are becoming increasingly socially libertarian. Obama beat us by 34 points in the last election, a record. And the Latino middle class and Latino voters, which is exploding. Here to make their case, Amanda Turkle, managing editor for thinkprogress.org, and Brian Faunen, a contributor to the blog redstate.com. Brian, would you agree with Mike Murphy that um, the GOP right now is moving in the wrong direction, at least in terms of who it's appealing to? Well, I think that I think that Mike is certainly right when he says that we have to learn how to appeal to votes that we're not getting right now to groups that we're not doing extremely well with right now. But by the same token, I think that that doesn't necessarily mean that we cast aside our principles and suddenly change the entire approach of the party. Um, but you do need to change some approach, right? And, and so the question is, what should what should the change be? Well, I think that I think that one thing is that we shouldn't get too far ahead of ourselves. We're we're a party in opposition. We're powerless in Washington in many respects. I think it's good to sit back and react to what the Obama administration does in some ways and see what our agenda is going to be uh, as we look at what policies he implements. Um, beyond that, um, you know, I think it's not clear exactly what we need to do. Um, I think Mr. Murphy pointed out we need to win more Latino and African American votes. Um, one of the big suggestions that he and others have made is that we need to become more liberal on social policies. I don't see how those two priorities can, yeah, how you can do both those things. Um, you're talking about appealing to more conservative social groups. Amanda, the quandary that Republicans are in, Democrats must be thrilled, right? Well, I don't know if Rep uh, Democrats are thrilled, but I mean, the right now there's tr talking about trying to reach out, a bigger tent, grow the party, but this type of race-based politics that we're seeing in the Sotomayor debate, that's I think highlighting it pretty clearly, that is not going to bring new people in. It's not bringing in young people, it's certainly not bringing in Latino voters, and it may have a very long-term impact on the Republican Party. Well, the question may be, uh, in terms of how do, you, how do you expand the reach of the Republican Party, one option, I suppose, might be, some Republicans suggest, Sarah Palin. Here's Sarah Palin from this morning, uh, talking on the Today Show, saying that she's not the face of the party. Watch. Now, absolutely not necessarily. Uh, you know, I want to help. I want to be able to help the cause. And the cause is to get Americans to remember that big government is not the answer. That's not the way that we're going to secure our nation and progress our nation and get our economy back on the right track. Brian, when you look at uh, who's essentially eating up the media oxygen, Sarah Palin, Newt Gingrich, Rush Limbaugh, occasionally Michael Steele, is there a future leader of the Republican Party that actually helps grow the party in that group? Well, I think that I think that Michael Steele and Sarah Palin both represent people that uh, that uh, might be part of a future generation of Republican leaders. You know, Rush Limbaugh is a media figure, always has been, always will be. I think that you have to separate um, media figures from elected officials. Um, and of course, there are lots of other bright, young, talented people in the Republican Party. I'm I'm thinking about Bobby Jindal in Louisiana, Nikki Haley, a great gubernatorial candidate in South Carolina, Marco Rubio, a great Latino candidate in Florida. I think these are the people we need to look to. Brian, let me ask you if you had to pick one way to uh, point the party in the right direction, the Republican Party in the right direction, what would it be? And I hate to put you in that you know, black or white category of absolute, but if you had your crystal ball, what would it be? I'm curious. To pick one way, I think that, I think that we need to stick with our principles, smaller, more effective gov government. Polls show there are far more conservatives in this country right now than there are Republicans, and we need to reach back to those conservatives that think the party's lost its way. But we also need to look to conservatives who can speak to different communities. And like I said, some of the people I just mentioned, Marco Rubio in Florida, Nikki Haley in South Carolina, Bobby Jindal, people that we consider non-traditional Republicans, but definitely strong conservatives. And Amanda, even though you're on the other side, is there one Republican strategy that, you, that Democrats may fear, that they might worry, okay, if the Republicans do pursue this particular change, that could make politics more competitive? Well, I haven't seen that strategy yet. Um, I mean, certainly, right now, I think Mike Murphy put it well, Republicans seem to be in the swoon of nostalgia. They can't stop talking about Reagan, even though most young voters weren't really aware of Reagan when he was president. And they keep looking to Newt Gingrich, Rush Limbaugh, these people who have been around for decades. So right now, I'm just not really seeing any many new voices or many new ideas. Amanda Turkle and Brian Fonan, thank you both very much. We appreciate you both coming in. Thank, thank you. you.
And you know, Tamron, Brian makes a great case yeah. for some of these governors who could be uh, could be the voice, but they don't have the platforms that these other Republicans do. Well, neither did the uh, junior senator from Illinois. When you look at some of the publications, mm -hmm. Newsweek, USA Today, and they thought who would be the leader, he was not on any of those covers and went on to this historic election. So maybe it's as we like.